in this video we're decorating the house for Halloween and I'm so excited to show you all of the spooky activities we got up to as well. This is my favourite time of year and I try and make it as magical as possible for my boys. And I hope I'm able to transfer some of that magic through the screen to you. Just a PSA for anyone new here, I do talk a lot and very fast, but it's just because I'm so enthusiastic. And yeah, I hope you enjoy watching the video as much as I did making it. So the first room we started on was the kitchen. And I'm so excited to show you some of the decorations I've got. But first, obviously, I've got to clear all of the clutter I've smushed down the side of the microwave. One day this will stop happening, but I doubt it's going to be any time soon. I've had to get all new Halloween decorations this year because Charlie threw all of my old ones away. It was this massive thing. I'd put all of the decorations in a black bag ready to be put in the attic and he thought it was rubbish. And yeah, all of the decorations I'd collected over the years, gone. But I've tried to make the best of it and I've got some really cool stuff. I'd seen a few people on here making these like bubbly cauldrons with their diffusers. But my diffuser's broken so I found this like colour changing fog making machine on Amazon. And it looks really cool, especially in the dark. I'll show you that later. But the only problem is it spills and splashes water absolutely everywhere. I really struggled trying to find a good sized, good shaped cauldron. I would have preferred a more rounded, witchy looking one, but this is the only one I could find. But it still looks cool. Look, I love it. Anyway, next on my to-do list was to clear this table. Again, clutter everywhere. Me and Rudy had been painting his school project on there. Here's me getting ready to stick up our eek sign. The imprints from last year's stickers still on the wall. Very handy. I'm really sad though because the sign we originally had was green and this one's purple. Excuse the fact that I'm literally shaped like Spongebob Squarepants. Not my most flattering angle, but look how cool this looks. Still wish it was green though. The green made the kitchen look so spooky. Next it was time for the obligatory cobweb tablecloth. You've got to, haven't you? I don't care about Halloween being aesthetically pleasing. It's a mishmash of everything in this house. The kids love it and that's what's important to me. Just had to move the stick insect tank out of the way. I'll show you how big they've grown in a minute. And it's finally that time of year where I get to take the orchids out of the window. The orchids are Charlie's. I'm not a massive fan of them. But from the months of October to December, the window seals mine. He has so many, they just block out the light and it makes me quite sad. But they bring him joy and it's important to have things that bring you joy in your home. So I just grin and bear them. Anyway, next it was time to climb up onto the counters and put the lights up. We've got a bit of a purple theme going on this year. These are little purple bats. By the way, yes, I know the windows are filthy. But we have a massive window spider that's been living here for about four months and I refuse to clean them until she's gone. Fits in with the Halloween theme anyway. We've got a load of different coloured little pumpkins to go in this windowsill. And I've got some clips to show you of the farm we got them from. And here's what a fully grown giant prickly stick insect looks like. I've said it before, but they make the best little pets. And here's my mum, the reason I am so obsessed with Halloween. She decided to try and make it extra magical for the boys by pulling them to the farm in this. We all took it in turns and we were all sweating buckets. But I just hope the boys have the best memories of Halloween. There was such a variety of pumpkins this year, so many different ones to choose from. I loved these ones especially, they were a kind of like beige orange colour. And I found it very hard to show restraint because I wanted one of every single colour. We go to this farm every year and it's usually just the pumpkins but they extended it into the back this year. So we got to meet these gorgeous little goats. Look at the little babies in a minute. I tried to give him a little stroke on the head and he kept trying to headbutt me. Don't know whether he was telling me he hated it or he wanted me to do it more. Ike stood there stuffing his face the entire time. Both of my kids were absolutely terrified of these animated scarecrows. Look at them though, how brill. I love when people go all out for Halloween. They had a German sausage stand. Oh, this one had cheese in the middle. Amazing. There was a sweet stand. By the way, the baby in the pumpkin costume is my nephew. I haven't had another baby. But yeah, there were some little pumpkin and skeleton sweets. It was basically like a little mini fair. I wasn't expecting it at all. Rudy had the absolute time of his life. To be fair, we all did. It was lovely. And to finish off the day, we had a ride on a tractor. By the time we made our way out, all the kids were knackered. My nephew did not want to fall asleep in there, but obviously gave in. And yeah, that was our little day pumpkin picking. These are the pumpkins I narrowed it down to. I got some more for the windowsill as well. But I really loved this mushroom-shaped one. The one on the left's that beigey orange colour I loved, and you can tell the difference between that one and the other orange one. 
And for the windowsill, I just got a pick and mix of all different coloured tiny ones. The lights I put up had started to fall down, ignore that. And here they all are, all the different colours. How cool is nature? I know they're specifically bred to look like that by humans, but still, like, how cool? Can I say cool any more times in this video? Yes. I just love this time of year so much. And now this is the best part of the video. Wait till you see what I've got to put on this fridge. Obviously, I've got to clean it first and it becomes harder and harder to clean each time. There's no point suggesting any cleaning products or rubbing alcohol or nail varnish. I've tried it all. It doesn't work. This was the best we could do. Now, these are my mum's spooky fridge magnets. She had them handmade. So unfortunately, I can't keep them. And if you never hear from me again on here, it's because I've broken one. But honestly, they're the best thing in the world. Every single monster you could possibly think of is on one of these fridge magnets. I'll give you a close-up in a minute. They were made by someone called Mr Barguest on Instagram. I'll write how to spell his name in the caption. Ike was really determined to grab one, which was making me very nervous. He does know they're not toys, though. And here they are. We've got a little candy corn, a mummy, a cute little werewolf. Then we've got a ghost, some kind of ghoul, Nosferatu, and a pumpkin. Then we've got Frankenstein's monster. Next one's a zombie with a little worm in his head. Then we've got a little devil demon kind of guy. And I'm not sure what this next one is. Is it, is it a troll? Next one's a skeleton and his jaws are detachable magnet too. And then the last three are a witch. A cute little purple bat that goes perfectly with my kitchen theme. And then last but not least, another zombie. Aren't they just the best fridge magnets you've ever seen? Anyway, here's the little cauldron. And I couldn't get the camera to focus on what the eek sign looks like when the camera pans out, but you can imagine. And here's what the bats all look like lit up. Here's the garden spider as well, just in time. She only really comes out when it starts to get dark. And yeah, that's what the kitchen looked like all lit up. And then around a week later, that's when I started working on the bedroom. I usually do all of my decorating in one go. I like to try and get it all done and then surprise Rudy when he gets home from school. But it's very difficult when you've got a toddler running around into absolutely everything. He'd pretty much only just started walking this time last year. So it was a lot easier to get everything done in one go. This year I had to kind of psych myself up ready for the tantrums. <laughs> Anyway, I bought this for the top of the bed. I thought it looked really creepy and it lights up as well, but it wasn't long enough. So next year I'm going to buy another one and it should look really good. This is my first year actually decorating the bedroom for Halloween. It's not something I ever really thought of doing before, but I'd seen these really cute pumpkin bed sheets uh, at Asda and I was like, why not? And they're so fluffy as well. Given the way the bedroom's laid out, I was a bit puzzled on what else to do apart from the garland and the spooky bed sheets. But then I thought, ah, I've got it. Terrifying pictures above the bed. <laughs> I say if you're going to go for Halloween, you might as well go for it. I know a lot of people probably find that really bizarre, but I was raised in a Halloween house and I, we don't see things like this as scary. It's all in good fun and what this time of year is all about. I'm going to show you a clip of the house I was raised in later on. But this time of year, Samhain, it's a pagan holiday. It's, um, it's a big thing in my household. My mum always made such an effort for it when we were little. And even though I personally don't follow any religion, it's still a tradition I want to uphold in my own house. Because life's short, isn't it? And childhood's even shorter. And I want to take as many opportunities as I can to decorate and to celebrate and to give them these special memories. Even now, at 30, when this time of year comes around, I just feel this familiar, joyful energy wash over me. There's something about the smell of the cold air and the damp on the soil and the smell of bonfires and the way we all start gathering together. It just makes me happy in my soul. And that feeling carries on all the way into a new year. So this model skeleton here, it's been cluttering my house up for months because Rudy had convinced my mum to get it for him when they were out shopping one time. And I was like, right, I'm going to make use of this and wrap some lights around it and add to the cosiness of the room. Anyone who's been watching the channel for a while knows that I've been trying to declutter and get rid of things and then my mum just comes home with a full-size skeleton. Whatever. Anyway, later that evening I went to visit my friends. The four of us have been friends since we were children and we rarely get to spend time all together anymore. And look what my friend Grace put together. I turned up early 
So I helped out by removing the cheese from the packet. <laughs> Took full credit for it. She gave me the wrong house number because she's moved house recently. So I'm knocking on the door of this random man. He opens the door all red-faced and angry and I'm like, uh, is Glenn there? That's her boyfriend and I don't know why I chose to ask about him rather than her because it looked like I was trying to meet up with some lad and I'd got given the wrong address. So that was funny and a little bit embarrassing because I was in my pyjamas. <laughs> But yeah, we watched one of my all-time favourite movies, Practical Magic. And look at this beautiful little autumn altar that Grace had made. So cute. I just wish adulthood wasn't so busy and we'd get to spend more time with the people we love. Anyway, a few days later we visited the place we visit every year in October, Cato's Farm. Let me just show you how the boys were dressed. It's so cute. Just letting you know there's some flashing lights coming up soon for anybody who has sensitivities. But yeah, originally, maybe even like five years ago, this farm was just a farm for pumpkin picking and it's grown so big. The first thing we did was go into a maze and Ike decided to eat some of the sweet corn. Not even half an hour in and Rudy was crying because it had started to rain and my mum was mocking me because I almost fell over. But basically, in this maze, they'd scattered around loads of animatronic dinosaurs. It was really cool. Not according to my nephew, though. <laughs> oh dear. But as I was saying about Kato's farm, it's grown so big now that people come from all over the country to visit the Halloween farm. They also do strawberry picking and they have a firework display and it's just great. All of the pumpkins in the pumpkin picking field had pretty much been annihilated at this point though. Then we took the boys into this giant inflatable room. This video does not do it justice as to how big this actually was. The boys were absolutely loving their lives. The only downside was adults couldn't go in because I would have absolutely loved to have gone down one of those slides. Look, well jealous. There were a number of different activities that you had to get tickets for. So for a lot of the time we wandered around just climbing on hay bales and eating donuts. Flashing lights coming up again now because there was a lot of fairground rides. I don't know what constitutes dangerous flashing lights so I'm just giving you a warning whenever a slight flashing light comes up. Then the next thing we did was go for a spooky Halloween tea. And they'd made all these little Frankenstein and pumpkin and witchy little puddings. They were so cute. Even the drink had giant gummy worms in it. And they'd made these egg mayo sandwiches and dyed the egg green. Which, although it did look very cool, put me off. Because I kept imagining that I could taste the food colouring. I'll show you in a second. Mm. <laughs> then next we went to something called Trick or Treat Street. And you walked through all these different themed rooms. And a lot of them had doors in where the kids could go and knock and then an actor dressed as some kind of spooky character had come out and give them sweets. So that was awesome. Unfortunately, I didn't get to film very much of that because my phone ran out of storage. So I had to quickly go through and delete a lot of videos. But I got some storage back just in time to film these babies. Oh my goodness. Look at that face. It makes me so sad because they should be with their mummy. Anyway, next we went to the Twisted Circus. And my mum was very smug because she'd been the day prior and she told us that this was really unimpressive. Which turned out to be a complete lie because it was absolutely amazing. There were aerial acrobats, fire artists, escape artists, that was scary to watch. And there was even stump motorbikes, it was just amazing. And then after that we walked around the fair as it was getting dark. I love walking through fairgrounds at night because it reminds me of the Lost Boys. That's another one I love to watch at Halloween, Lost Boys. It's just so nostalgic and atmospheric. Anyway, the boys had one more go on the rides and then it was time to go home. And then just a few days ago, I got to work on the last room I was decorating in the house. And this is why you'll probably be seeing this video at the end of October, maybe early November. I do apologise, I wanted to post it earlier, but yeah. Just had to have a quick hoover because the floors get very messy very fast in this house. And then Ike was up to his usual tricks of blocking the hoover. So I managed to convince him to do it together. It's a lot more time consuming this way, but it's modelling life skills, isn't it? I want to encourage my boys to help out, especially when they're shown an interest in it. So, for this room, I usually have some green eyeball lights that I twist all around the banister. But, as I said earlier, Charlie threw away all the decorations. But I managed to find some new ones, put the batteries in, and it started smoking. So I guess the positive is it happened as soon as I put the batteries in and not later down the line. But it's a real shame because there were such fab little lights. Never mind, eh? I had these cobweb lights um, to attach to the window, but I just thought, why not put them on the stairs? It always feels like something's missing if there isn't lights on the stairs. 
Anyway, next I switched out the boring cushions for the Halloween cushions. I got these from Asda as well. Thank you, colleague discount. <laughs> I did want to get a throw as well for the settee, but honestly, I have spent way too much money this month. And that's just trying to rebuild even half of the collection I originally had. Ah, well, I'll just have to keep trying to add to it year by year. Next, we put some spooky pumpkin lights up. This room's more of an orange theme and the kitchen's a purple theme. I like themes. I'd usually have Lost Boys on in the background while I decorated. That's kind of a tradition of mine, each Halloween, because I just love Michael in it. Oh, so gorgeous. Every year I try and convince Charlie to dress up as him for Halloween. You know, with the earring and the leather jacket, proper 80s. And every year he's like, absolutely not. It's a spoil sport. But yeah, now Ike's aware of his surroundings, I can't really watch things like that anymore. I did show him Nightmare Before Christmas the other day though, and he seemed to really love that. A few more I want to introduce him to are Coraline and Monster House. Maybe when he's a bit older though, because those are still quite creepy, aren't they? Anyway, here we're filling up our trick-or-treat bowl. Did the packet stay in the bowl? Did they heck? So that's been moved back into the kitchen. And now let me show you what the room looked like at night time, all lit up. Nice and cosy. I would have preferred more light on the banister, but it is what it is. The boys chose Hotel Transylvania to watch while we ate dinner. And then we went to visit my mum for her birthday. So here's what my mum's house looks like. This is just the outside and I'll have to give you a tour of the inside one day. It's pretty much Halloween themed all year round. Just not quite to this extent. The boys were so excited to give her a present. Rudy had made her a drawing. And I just wanted to show you this clip because I think it's so adorable. She always interacts with my boys with so much enthusiasm. Everyone deserves a grandma like my mum. Thank you, sweetheart. Oh, you keep my thing safe. Oh, it smells lovely. What I is think it? I know what it is. A Nina. A Nina? Yeah. <gasps> Pumpkin Man. Oh, my God. Yes. Look, there's three sides of green. That's green. And say it's, it's what I know. Thank you, yeah. Charlie. A few days after that, I decided to design a Halloween lamp for the living room. I do this most years, and usually, I like to draw some cute little designs on the lamp shade. But this year, everything was just so hectic, I'd got Ike running around. So I wanted to make something that still looked really cool and effective, but took less time. So I found this cheap and cheerful lamp from B&M, and then I thought, I'm going to paint it black and see if I can find some, like, um, stick-on eyeballs or anything like that. Something that would make it look cool. And also, I don't know if you can see, but in the middle of the actual like stand of the lamp, there's a hole. So I was going to put some teeth in there. I noticed recently you can get these sticking teeth for um, pumpkin carving kits. I don't know when that became a thing and I don't know how I feel about it, to be honest. I think one of the joys of carving pumpkins is the fact that you have to struggle carving the teeth. But that's just me turning into an old lady who's set in a ways. Anyway, whilst I painted the base, I didn't actually have Ike or Rudy with me, so I got to watch one of my favourite films, American Werewolf in London. I love everything about that film, but the best part for me is the soundtrack. Van Morrison, Credence Clearwater Revival, it's just immaculate. Anyway, while I'm here painting this, I just wanted to take the time out to say thank you so much for 100,000 subscribers. I can't actually believe that many of you want to sit and listen to me ramble on. I remember when I was younger, I didn't believe it was even in the realm of possibility for someone like me to grow on YouTube. I thought there was only a very select few who could, and that it was probably because they joined at the right time when YouTube was just starting out. Because you'd always hear in 2023, social media is just too saturated now, and there's so many people making videos, there's just not much chance of yours being seen. And yeah, when I started making videos, I did hope they'd reach the people who enjoyed them. But I didn't expect it at all, especially not this quick. So yeah, it just goes to show it's never too late to start. And there are people out there who will find value in what you put out. And if you're too scared to try because you think you might fail, well then that's an automatic fail anyway, isn't it? Go for it, I say. Life's short. Anyway, later on that day when the boys got home, it was time to start sticking things on. Unfortunately, the teeth I bought were shaped in such a way that I couldn't get them to stick. So we had to make do with the eyes. I had Rudy there, my little helper, making sure I didn't put two of the same eye next to each other. I got these eyes from Amazon, by the way. I just typed in multicoloured stick-on eyes. Took a while to find the ones I was thinking of in my mind's eye, but they were there. And yeah, I just thought it was a cute little Halloween craft to do with the kids. 
I always wish I could be that kind of mum that does like Halloween baking and cakes and all these different things like that, but it just stresses me out so much. <laughs> this is definitely more up my alley. Does anyone else get the guilt this time of year or in any of the school holidays, really? When you see other mums on social media doing all of these crafts and activities with their kids. I feel like a lot of people fail to mention the behind the scenes where there's tantrums and flour thrown everywhere. <laughs> The majority of the time, expectations and reality do not line up. Even when I was doing this, Ike was screaming because he couldn't stick the eyeballs on. He kept stealing them and running away. And I accidentally super glued my fingers together. So that was fun. By the way, I have to mention, I know that this is filmed in vertical form, which can be a bit annoying for some people, but it's because I repurpose my videos for my other platforms as well. For anyone new here, not every video is filmed in vertical. I do film horizontal as well. And that's when I do my dedicated long form videos. Anyway, let me show you how the lamp turned out. I am proper chuffed with this. Especially the coverage of the black paint. I think it looks awesome. It's just a shame we couldn't stick the teeth in as well. I'll show you what it looks like switched on. What do you think? I'm very happy with that. And now I'm going to show you the last spooky activity we did this month. We started going to this last year. So this is our second year going to Cork Abbey's Open Air Cinema for Halloween. Last year they played Hocus Pocus and this year, as you can probably tell, it was Ghostbusters. And we all dressed for the part. For those of you that don't know Cork Abbey, it's an old stately home and it has this massive ground. So we all gathered in the dark with our blow-up chairs and our blankets. They had food stands there so we got some burgers and hot dogs. And when I tell you it was freezing, it was freezing. As the evening progressed, even when I had my UD on, I was absolutely shivering. But it was such a lovely cosy night and I'm always grateful for any opportunity I get to spend with my family. That was a bowl of apple crumble and custard. But yeah, in times like this, I think it's so important to remember just how privileged we are to be able to spend time with our loved ones. And to have the freedom to go out and to go to events like this. It makes me think of a quote I've seen circulating a lot recently. If you're able to tuck a healthy child into a warm bed in a safe home, then you've won the lottery of life. Anyway, that's the end of today's video and I really hope you enjoyed watching.